Yes, George Borkard, and this is another Higher Things video short. Why name it and claim it might not be the most helpful way to pray. That's the subject of today's Higher Things video short. Hey, if you love our videos, if you're learning about your faith in places you never expected to learn about your faith from, a Missouri Synod Lutheran pastor, come here, boy, and his Jack Russell Terrier named Thor, go ahead and like and subscribe today. You can also go to support.higherthings.org and give today. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things, a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation. Keeps us a-rolling. Remember, these videos are for you, to resource you for your children. They're also for your for you young people to be resourced. Double win! Subscribe today. We've all heard this these different sort of things that occur. Uh, prayer of Jabez, name it, claim it. Some, some program, some formula that we just do and then God does. It is, a, it is the uh, quid pro quo philosophy. You, you sort of say what you want, you claim it, and that's it. And, there, and usually there's some sort of scripture involved that somebody has found a prayer or something and we just mimic that prayer. And if we just mimic that, those actions, we're in. Yesterday, we had the centurion who orders Jesus around. And so I guess we just order Jesus around and that's it. And that's great faith. Hold on a second. All of this is works. And not faith. The centurion believed that God was good. He trusted that God did, God delivers what he promises in his word. So if he says heal, it'll be healed. His servant will be healed. Lord, I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. That is not given to us for us to make that a law. Pray this way. It is the centurion servant principle. No. The problem with that is not that the centurion didn't have faith. He did. The problem is also that you, not that you may not have faith. Because the answer to that is, do you have a savior? The problem is that we think that if we just get the formula down, if we just do what is written in the, do whatever it is that we're supposed to do, however it is we're supposed to do it, that we can manipulate, control, convince God to do something that we want, control him, get a hold of him. That is, is utter works righteousness. We're running the show. We're making God do what we want by doing what we think he wants. Praying a certain prayer. Buttering it up. God, you're such a big God. You're so mighty and strong and and I'm going to butter you up and compliment, compliment, compliment. And then request. The Lord would have you pray as dear children pray to their dear father, the Lord would have you trust that he is a good God and you are his children. The Lord would have you trust in Jesus, Calvary, Easter, to be the thing which makes you makes him sit on the edge of his seat hearing your prayers, not something you do. The problem with name it and claim it is that or all of these different prayers set sort of systems is that what we do is we turn them into a work, we turn the gift into a work that we do to in order to control God, to make God be the God that we want him to be, rather than to trust and believe that because of Jesus, God hears our prayers. Because of Jesus, he answers. Because of Jesus, everything he does, he does for our good, which makes his yes answers good and his no answers good. Faith doesn't try to manipulate God, doesn't try to force God, doesn't try to to get the right program and formula with God in order to make the relationship with him work. Faith knows the relationship is based on the cross. God has a relationship with us because of the cross. He is our father and we are his children. And relationship is even weak to describe it. He's dad. We're child. He's our father. And Jesus is our brother. And because of what bro does... We're saved, and God hears our prayers. And so flee, dear children of God. 
from anything which you think might control, manipulate, and tweak God into being the God that you want him to be. And instead, trust that because of Calvary and Easter, he is the God that you want him to be. He's the God who saves you, despite you. I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this has been another Higher Things Video Short.